Microservices, today on 5 Minutes of Cloud. Let's talk about microservices. This is one of the new technologies or reasonably new technologies people have been talking about in terms of advanced accelerated cloud enabled cloud scale application deployments. Uh, really thinking about the next generation of applications that people are starting to develop or have been developing now for many years. This services domain, this application development domain can sort of trace its roots back at least to uh, Amazon in the uh, early 2000s when they were going through growth in terms of how their application environments were, were being built. And um, a dictum apparently came down from the top of their organization saying, if you use anything other than APIs to communicate between different service domains, and this is things like their backend book database versus their front end web service that actually displays the books, that is a sort of a way of separating these resources. If you use anything other than APIs to talk between these two services, you will no longer be working uh, at, at Amazon. At least that's the way I've heard the story, and I'm sure there are many variants of that. Um, but the real genesis of this is this concept of saying, well, rather than saying, I want to build a bookstore as an application environment and thinking, well, I need a front end resource. So I need to have a, a way of displaying those books. I need to catalog and keep track of those books. And maybe I need to have a, a billing database so that I know if somebody bought a book, I can send them a bill for it. Um, and I need to deal with taxes. So I need to have a tax database. And rather than building all of those pieces together, you start separating those resources out and say, well, taxes are different, but I can ask a service to tell me what the tax implications of a particular sale are because I can pass it information like the source of the seller and the destination of the buyer. Uh, and those two might actually have different tax implications that can be resolved by a tax service. But rather than trying to understand the tax database and building that into my application, I build a separate application, a micro service, just to deal with that taxing implication. I, deal, I create another service just to provide a web-based front end. Maybe I'll create another service just to provide a mobile interface for my Android applications and a separate one for my iP uh, iPhone or iOS-based applications. That's the, the sort of the genesis behind the microservices concept. And as far as I can tell, it, it really comes down to a couple of key topic points. Number one, you only interact with microservices through some form of application programming, programming interface, an API. Now, today that is most commonly REST, but that doesn't have to be REST. That's just one of the most common ways of doing this in the modern web-enabled, web-driven world. Um, another thing is that the service is self-contained. You don't interact with that service in any way other than within the API itself. And beyond that, it seems like really your, your decision to separate or combine resource components into a service or into separate services really comes down to how the application gets developed over time. So a microservice may not be that micro, but the idea is that it's smaller than the sum of its parts, right? So when you look at the entire application space, you'll have multiple services. Each one is a microservice. Each one only interacts through a set of APIs. And that's really the key to microservices. So when somebody says, hey, we want to build a new microservices architecture, that's really what they're talking about. This separation at an API level and keeping the systems separate at that, that resource level. This is Robert Sarmer from Cumulus Technologies, bringing you another episode of 5 Minutes of Cloud.